In this video, we're going to focus on double factorials. But before we get into what a double factorial is, let's talk about factorials first. For instance, how do we evaluate 5 factorial? 5 factorial is equal to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. You start with this number and you multiply that number by every integer going down to 1. So let's calculate this answer. 5 times 4 is 20. 3 times 2 is 6. 20 times 6. If you have 6 $20 bills, you have $120. So that's 120. So for instance, 7 factorial will be 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now we already know this part. That's equal to 5 factorial. So that's 7 times 6 times 5 factorial. 7 times 6 is 42, and we know that 5 factorial is 120. So multiplying 42 by 120 gives us the value of 7 factorial, which is 5,040. So we saw the value of 5 factorial, but now what about 5 double factorial? What is 5 double factorial equal to? 5 double factorial is going to be 5 times 3 times 1. So instead of decreasing the numbers by 1 starting from 5, we're decreasing by 2. So this is simply 15. Double factorials will give you a lower value than regular single factorials. So based on that example, what do you think 8 double factorial is equal to? So starting with 8, we're going to multiply each number decreasing by 2. So it's going to be 8 times 6 times 4 times 2. 8 times 6 is 48. 4 times 2 is 8. So 48 times 8. That's going to be 384. So that's how you can evaluate a double factorial. Now, you need to understand something. These two expressions are not equivalent. So n double factorial is not the same as n factorial factorial. So on the left, this is a double factorial. On the right, that's what is known as an iterated factorial. So let me show you how to calculate an iterated factorial. Let's say if we have 3 factorial, factorial. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. And then we need to take the factorial of that value. 3 times 2 times 1 is 6. So we need to calculate 6 factorial, which is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 6 times 5 is 30. And then 3 times 2 is 6. 30 times 4 is 120. And 120 times 6. 12 times 6 is 72. So 120 times 6 is going to be 720. So that's the value of the iterated factorial of 3. Now, for the sake of practice, go ahead and try these examples. 7 factorial, the double factorial of 10, and the iterated factorial of 4. Well, let me use something other than 7 factorial. We cover that one. Let's make this 9 factorial. So this is going to be 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 all the way to 1. So this is going to equal 9 times 8 and then everything else we can replace that with 7 factorial. 9 times 8 is 72 and early in this video we calculated 7 factorial which we found it to be 5040. So 5,040 times 72, that's equal to 362,880. So that's the value of 
9 factorial. Now the double factorial of 10, that's going to be 10 times 8 times 6 times 4 times 2. 10 times 8 is 80. 6 times 4 is 24 times 2. 24 times 2 is 48. So we have 80 times 48, which is 3,840. As you can see, that's a lot less than 362,880. Now the iterated factorial of 4, it's going to be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So that's 4 factorial. And 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. Now this is going to take a long time to calculate, 24 factorial. So I'm going to use a calculator for that. And this is equal to 6.20448, that's a rounded answer, times 10 to the 23rd power. So iterated factorials can give you a very, very high number for such a small value. Whereas a double factorial gives you a relatively low value for a small number, I mean for a large number. So now you understand the difference between a single factorial, a double factorial, and an iterated factorial. Thanks for watching.